I'm Lauren Southern here with the Rebel Media, and with me now to talk about the death of the internet is Stefan Molyneux. Hi, Stefan. How are you doing? I'm well, Lauren. How are you doing? Great. Thanks for taking your time out to uh, come and do this. So I listen to a few shows in the morning while I'm getting ready, doing my hair, all that. And I love to listen to yours because it's such a nice, relaxing, philosophical discussion. But instead of uh, relaxing to philosophical discussions while brushing my teeth this morning, what I got was a terrifying doomsday message uh, for my career and for communication as a whole of apparently the internet being sold off to foreign dictators and globalists at the United Nations. I'm still trying to take in uh, what's going on here, so if you could please go over this insanity with the viewers, that would be amazing. Yeah, and I just want to point out, it sounds like hyperbole alert, you know, the death of the internet, but there is a real potential that the kind of free speech that we enjoy is seriously threatened. Uh, basically, what happened was the American government developed internet protocols and standards as part of its sort of Cold War desire to avoid losing communications in the event of a nuclear strike, which is why it's also beautifully decentralized and uh, replicatable and all that. And so there's a basically a giant bunch of computers that map human-friendly names like freedomainradio.com or the rebel.media to actual IP addresses so you don't have to remember even more numbers in your head than you already do with pins and phone numbers. And that has been under the control of America. Uh, it's uh, under the uh, Department of Commerce, so it doesn't end up being prosecuted for a monopoly. And what's happened is uh, the government in America, because of First Amendment uh, restrictions on any government interference in free speech, has been pretty good. Uh, it's, it's done almost nothing to interfere with free speech on the internet. Uh, naturally, that is a problem that needs to be fixed because there are a lot of governments around the world who are quite frustrated with the capacity of the internet to broadcast uh, different ideas outside the propaganda, outside the mainstream narrative. So uh, what happened was in 2014, as you recall, uh, Edward Snowden revealed that the NSA uh, was a spying, of course, on Americans and also on foreign leaders. And everyone kind of went crazy overseas and said, that's it. America has had way too much control over the Internet. You need to cede it to an international body, uh, in particular this uh, DNS or this name resolution. And so that has been sort of proposed. It's been fought and it's kind of on the cusp of uh, turning over uh, as we speak. Where it's going to land remains somewhat unknown, but the most likely place uh, is a bunch of spotty butted bureaucrats uh, in the United Nations uh, who say that the internet should be governed by some vague adherence to unspecified human rights, whatever that's going to mean. Whatever that's going to mean, it's not going to be good. And so it will move out from under First Amendment protections into some international coalition where countries with wonderful free speech and human rights <laughs> records like China, uh, like uh, Saudi Arabia and other countries are going to have a lot of input into how the internet works and whether people can even get to your website easily or not. Oh, that's just great. I'm sure uh, everyone in the Middle East loves our shows and definitely wants them broadcasted to everyone. Um, so this discussion is actually happening in Congress right this second. People are saying it's going to be instituted as soon as tomorrow if Ted Cruz and Ken Paxton can't stop it. I believe they're suing the Obama administration in order to cause a temporary block at the moment. How likely do you think it is that Ted Cruz and Ken Paxton will succeed in uh, preventing this? I think the best they can hope for is a brief delay. The, the central crux of the argument, Lauren, is goes something like this, that the, um, uh, the government does not have the right to sell or dispose of federal property without the approval of Congress. And so the argument is that because the Internet and these name servers and this whole architecture was developed um, – with the, the U.S. taxpayer money under the uh, government by private contractors, that it, it is property of the federal government and therefore cannot be transferred to others without the approval of Congress. Um, President Obama, of course, as usual, is deferring to Congress and the con No, he's not doing any of that whatsoever. Uh, he's doing the exact opposite, which, of course, is trying to bypass uh, Congress and move this uh, architecture to international hands as quickly as possible. There, of course, is a problem that a lot of people are away. It's kind of late uh, in the day. So they are suing, trying to say, look, you can't uh, transfer this because it is federal government. But there is a GAO report that says it's not. So this is going to bat back and forth uh, among the courts. I guess the hope is that at least it can be delayed to the point where 
our natural outrage over the removal of such a powerful medium for spreading ideas freely uh, is put out for public debate. People can push back. They can let people know. And I urge people, I'm not a big one for political action, but in this case, I'm willing yeah. to break protocol uh, and really, really urge people to get in touch with your congressman, get in touch with your congresswomen. And I get lots of messages from people outside the U.S. saying, A, will this affect me? The answer is B, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. And also, uh, you can contact people in the U.S. You can make videos. You can post stuff. Just you know, repost my videos repost this interview, get people to understand that this is one of the few times where I think getting in touch with people might make a real difference. Now, if Ken Paxton and Ted Cruz do not succeed, and this is instituted tomorrow, I'm pretty sure I, we can at least uh, take faith in the fact that the whole internet probably won't be shut down in one day <laughs> and just go dark. But I mean, we've seen what happens in Saudi Arabia. We've seen what happens in China to websites. How will this affect the little people as soon as this, uh, a year from now, if this is instituted? Will you start to see websites like your own be taken down? I mean, I know you can't tell the future. You don't really have a crystal ball. But what do you think are going to be the major uh, consequences of this? Well, it's not just overseas. I mean, Hillary Clinton has talked about her desire to shut down particular websites that have been very critical of her run for presidency. So it's not just going to be overseas. But my guess is that there'll be a sort of period to let people's uh, defenses and, and alarm lull down where things will kind of continue. And then there'll be a couple of, you know, a couple of chilling shots across the bow where particular people get in trouble for, again, violating these fairly unspecified human rights of people all around the world. And then people will start to get more cautious. You know, it doesn't take take a lot of shots across the bow, Lauren, as you know, for people to start self-censoring and do that cost-benefit analysis. Well, I could say this, but then I heard about someone who got in trouble, so maybe I'll just avoid it. And it's that kind of soft self-censorship after a couple of shots goes across the bow that is my particular concern, because that is a kind of hidden uh, dissipation of discourse that's hard to find. Uh, but I do think this is the bad news, and, and of course, we need to, I think, as much as we can, push back against it. However, there are a lot of people in the world, uh, all over the world, who are really dedicated to the idea of free speech across the internet. Having a centralized place where domain names are resolved and people are sent to the right place is a weak spot in the entire architecture. Of course, it was developed by governments. So compared to something like Bitcoin, which has its blockchain, which is a sort of publicly distributed way of updating information, I'm sure, and I know that there are works, uh, uh, there are efforts going on at the moment to create an alternative way of navigating the internet that is going to be decentralized and l less subject to the kind of government controls, even that the current system is. So, you know, it's the old thing, you know, where, where statism sometimes shuts a door, the remnants of the free market may open a window and we may end up with a more decentralized and even freer internet than we started with. That's what keeps me going in the day because otherwise it does look a little bit of a black tunnel. Absolutely. I mean, don't keep all your eggs in one basket. Uh, not a great idea. I always imagine this kind of apocalyptic version of the world. And this would be kind of like an apocalypse for us if the internet just went dark. What would everyone do? What would you do with your life? What would happen to all these jobs? It, honestly, if we lost the internet, most millennials would lose their jobs. We'd be out of contact with friends, everything. It would be insanity um, if we lost a lot of the access to uh, the per current internet programs we have right now. I have a, just two more questions for you. The first one is, if this is sold off to the UN, if they get access to it and have full control, is there any way, any way for the US to ever regain that power that they had before? Well, according to all reports, no. Once the um, the name servers, once the databases, once the servers, once the capacity is uh, ceded to others, uh, there is no way uh, to recover it. That's uh, that's very scary. And just my last question for you: What should and can people do to stop this? And where can people find more of your content? <sighs> Well, as I mentioned, if you feel, if you're outside the U.S., your congressman, your congresswoman probably won't give you as much attention as if you are inside the U.S. But just because you're outside the U.S. doesn't mean you can't talk to people who are in the U.S. You know, lots of people are out there with um, particular ideas about the U.S. elections, and you don't have to be in the U.S. to talk about the U.S. elections. You don't have to be in the U.S. to talk about this issue. You know, get on the horn to people you know, share videos, share ideas, share podcasts, whatever it is that you've got, get the information out there. This 
is one of these bipartisan issues where once people get the information, Lauren, it seems like everyone's kind of on the same side. Mm -hmm. And there's a poll that the overwhelming majority of Americans do not want to cede control of this uh, architecture of the internet overseas. So get something done. This is one of the few times where political action is really the only thing that can be right. done. So just share information, get the word out there, and really, really commit to providing to our children the kind of incredible freedoms uh, of speech that we inherited from our ancestors. Just be part of that chain, passing these essential freedoms forward. If people do want to hear more of my thoughts on the subject, they can, of course, go to freedomainradio.com or youtube.com slash freedomainradio to get more. Awesome. Thank you so much uh, for coming on, Stefan. I hope the internet isn't gone tomorrow because we should definitely uh, do one of these talks again soon. And as for everyone watching, please, please, please speak up about this. Please share this video and Stefan's videos on his channel because I don't care who you are, left wing, right wing, Christian, gay, whatever, you are under the threat of being censored by globalist elites who do not care about you and instead care about themselves and the censorship concerns that they have. If you like this video and the UN hasn't censored us yet, then go ahead and click this link here for more content at The Rebel.